Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at Hypothesis and the way that I use Hypothesis to make closed or private reading groups for my classes. I've done a series of videos talking about how I use Hypothesis to mark up and annotate my own uh, reading and, and my work as I, as I search and sift online, but I also use it in my classes. Um, one of the challenges in this is that a lot of our students have been socialized up to this point where they will be given a, a book by the teacher or they'll get a book out of the library or they will go, you know, online and they'll get a, a PDF and they'll, they'll print it out and they'll mark up and annotate and highlight that PDF. Um, they might even mark up and annotate and highlight that, that book. Um, but, but there's this reliance on a piece of text, a piece of paper in front of them to read. Um, and so hypothesis, puts that on its head and it turns it upside down and for a lot of students it can be a, a challenge it could be problematic um, I let my students know right from the outset that this is what I'm doing uh, I talk a, about the fact that I am a literacy researcher and I do a lot with technology and I'm purposefully <laughs> problematizing the ways in which they read um, and for me it's important because I that's what I study that's what I do that's what this class is all about um, and they and I am training people to be teachers. Um, so I, I make that known from the outset because this will be problematic for uh, many students. Um, but I feel like the you know over the course of the semester, it's interesting um, the places that we get to in our discussions just about the the processes involved in reading. Um, so normally you can use hypothesis, and we've talked about hypothesis in the past. You can go back to all my other videos on that. Normally, we use hypothesis just to mark up and annotate and take notes of online text and PDFs uh, either openly so that other people can see it or you can have private notes so that only you can see them and review them. In a lot of classes, if I have 20, 25, 30, or let's say I have 20 students um, across two or three sections, it can be problematic when you have 45, 50 odd students all marking up and annotating the same web page or the same PDF. So I find it's helpful to have closed groups just to segment things off from semester to semester or section to section. Um, also, you want to think about um, FERPA or student privacy and do they want this trail of breadcrumbs out there online. Most of my classes I err toward the side of open and I nudge them toward the side of open, but you need to decide what's appropriate for you um, and your students. So with that being said, I just want to leave, lead you through the process. Um, this is a class that I'm, uh, I just recently started up and I want to set up a group for them. So if I go to Hypothesis, I'm already logged in, but it's going to require that I log in again. So here is my page with all of my markups and my annotations. Let me zoom down a little bit here. So this is all my annotations and this is stuff I've covered in the past. I'm going to go to Groups. And you can see other groups I've had. I'm going to create a new group. So normally what I'll do is I want to name this with some sort of prefix so my students can figure it out. So I'm going to call this C of C just so that they know they're in the right place. I'm going to call it TEDU 325. And I'm going to say Spring 18 for this semester. I'm also going to have a little description and say this is a closed uh, reading group for TEDU 325 with me. And I'm going to say create new group. So now once we create the new group, this is the space. Um, this is the normal hypothesis you know, window that you see. What I have up here is my search bar. And this is where if you look back at your postings, it'll have all of your notes. You can search for a tag. Um, but you can also notice that I can search for a group. This is a private group, um, so this is something that only my students can be a part of, um, and I have to invite them. So what I normally do will be um, this page will list all of the annotation annotations and markups and highlights for the class. Um, so the nice thing is I can always, when I'm grading, I can come back just to this page and see what has, you know, what's everybody doing, what's everybody sharing. I can see how they're tagging things. Um, I can see the members, so I can see if my students have joined or not. Um, so normally what I'll do is I'll grab this link here. And as soon as I grab that link, what it's doing is it's basically giving you permission 
to join the group. Okay, so I'm already in the group, so it's not that big of a deal. But as students, um, what I do is I give them tutorials and materials on how to get Hypothesis up and running. Um, and then I send them this link um, someplace else. I'm going to show a later video on how I use Google Classroom. I send them this link so they can join. So this part is not that difficult. You will, students will have stumbles getting a Hypothesis account up and running, figuring out what does Hypothesis mean, um, what is a Chrome extension. There's a lot of like stumbles along the way, but I have a lot of videos and a lot of blog posts out there explaining in detail what to do. And I want them to try and figure it out on their own, knowing that I have all the materials in the scaffolding out there. Even with that, with a class of 20-ish students, I still have one or two students that always um, send me a hangout message and they say, I don't quite get this. Can I come in face to face? Of course, come in before or after class, come in during office hours or jump on a hangout and we can talk through this. Um, but once they join your closed group, once they join Hypothesis and they're in the closed group, the only other glitch that I see at the beginning of the semester is when they actually mark something up. So as an example, Here's a, a, a web page that I might have them. This is one of the initial pages I had them mark up and annotate just to see can they figure it out. Hypothesis, I will normally have them mark up and annotate PDFs, but that can be a little bit more challenging. Um, so I give them just a basic web page to mark up and annotate just to see if they can get it done. Um, and so I have Hypothesis installed here. I'll click my little extension so it pops up. It's taken a while. Come on, Hypothesis. You know I'm talking about you. Is it blocking me? Interesting. So let's pull up a different one for purposes of argument. Where is the... I'll find an example of one that I've used. All right, so this one I know works because I just sent it out. So if I click on this, my little hypothesis toolbar pops up. So as always with hypothesis, if I select a piece of text, I can mark up, I can annotate. So if I annotate this thing, um, I can share this, you know, wherever I want to. But the trick that I always find is, <clears throat> excuse me. In marking up and annotating, one of the challenges here is, let me get rid of this. One of the challenges, you want to make sure that you're leaving your annotations and your highlights in the group. This is one of the key ways that students mess up. Um, so if I click on this, I can, you want them to click on here and not save it to public, save it to their group. So you want them to click through to the group. I'm in a bunch of groups, obviously, but I can click through and make sure I'm in that group and then start to annotate. So that's one of the ways that, uh, that's one of the glitches, or not glitches, but one of the ways that students frequently get confused. Um, so they want to start a hypothesis, get it running, go here, make sure they're in there in the group and not public or private or anything else. Make sure it's in the group. And I have a lot of groups here because I'm running a lot of classes, but they want to make sure they're in that group and then go annotate. And you'll see, as you do that, so if I click on this, as I annotate, then I see I'm in the group. I can tag it, it posts it to the group, or only me. So that's one of the key issues that students have at this point, is just making sure this says that they're in the group and leaving it. And if they're only in one group, which they typically are because I'm the only person doing this, it's either public or their group. Um, so that's one of the key steps to make sure they're leaving it in the right place. So once again, that's Hypothesis. That's how I set up and use Hypothesis as a closed reading group for my classes. Um, I'll have a bunch of other videos showing how I use, how I set up other materials, but I wanted to quickly go through and show how I set it up for my classes. Hopefully that's beneficial to you. I know there's a couple of people out there that wanted to see how to do this, and I just wanted to document it now. Um, by all means, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, you can head on through and see the other links from my other pieces online, find my, uh, my newsletter and my blog, and hopefully have a great rest of the day.